Like Pavlov and Watson, Skinner approached psychology inductively. But instead of studying how stimuli produce a response, Skinner emphasized the importance of what happens after a behavior occurs. He showed that behavior which is followed by a reward is more likely to occur, and behavior that is followed by a punishment decreases temporarily as long as the punisher is present. Only extinction, the continued absence of a reward, decreases behavior permanently. So if your employer wants you to stop coming to work, they don't have to zap you with a taser. They can simply stop paying you. If they stop paying you, you'll stop going. Behavioral consequences have a large but diffuse effect. In contrast to the pinpoint connection of a stimulus and response in classical conditioning, whatever happens after a response has a general effect. It impacts all of the preceding behaviors. To understand how this works, pretend you don't have words. With no language available, no one can tell you why they are doing what they are doing. You have to figure it out yourself. Suppose you walk out on stage and everyone claps. Are they clapping because they like you? Because they are going to clap for anyone who arrives? Because you were smiling? Because your clothes are on fire? Or because of the funny things you say? Or because of the funny way you walk? When you get a reward, you don't know exactly what you're being rewarded for. And when you're being punished, you don't know what in particular you did wrong. Especially if you have no words. If no one explains what the rule is, and you only have things happening to you, you're quite confused. This happens a lot in social interaction. No one tells you the group dynamics. You have to figure them out yourself. Both reinforcement and punishment are broad strokes. They impact a lot of behaviors. When you're rewarded, the technical term is reinforced, all the behaviors get a boost. If you're combing your hair when someone says you look good, you tend to comb your hair more even if they were looking at your shoes and not your head. Similarly, when you're punished, all behaviors stop. It's only temporary, but it's a total shutdown. When someone is punished, they retreat, curl up in a ball, and try to do nothing at all. So people learn by consistency. Over time, we change our patterns of behavior. The parts that consistently get rewarded, we continue to do. And the parts that get consistently punished, we stop doing, at least temporarily. You might slow down because you see a police car, but you know that once it's gone, you're back to your typical speed. Punishment, or the threat of punishment, works, but it's only a stopgap. Punishment always comes with risks. First, the punisher is often angry. This sends multiple messages. It not only says stop, but it can also say, I don't love you, or you should be afraid of me. These extra messages of personal value don't add strength to the punishment, but can have long-lasting negative effects on relationships. Second, classical condition doesn't stop working. The punisher becomes the trigger for the fear reflex. Third, punishment stops all behavior. It stops the bad behavior, but it also stops the positive ones. You can't learn to do better by learning not to do anything. Punishment is overused. It is often the first thing parents, teachers, and coaches go to. It gets immediate results, but it doesn't provide long-term benefits. Fifth, the reward-punishment ratio is too low. Ample reinforcement should be applied with a minimum of punishment. Ten rewards for every punishment would be okay. Hundred rewards to every punishment would be a better place to start. Sixth, punishment models bad behavior. It makes a practical example of how to hit yell, and curse. Think of it as an object lesson in aggression. The benefits of rewards are many. The emotional side messages are positive. The rewards trigger the reflex of happiness. Reinforcement increases behavior. Most people need more reinforcement, and it models positive behavior. In addition, reinforcement works on dogs, cats, whales, lions, horses, children, parents, and you. You can change your own behavior by following it with a reward. I have a friend who walks to the store to buy a daily paper. No walk, no paper. There's no need for punishment, just consistently tying reward to action. Like the other behaviors, Skinner believed that personality was a collection of behaviors. Personality is what you do. If you don't like your personality, change it. Only with Skinner, change it with rewards.